getting ready to go live in this transmission of spirit. Mochiwa. <laughs> Let's get light up this energy. Makaya. <laughs> Mokoi. It's always a, a great pleasure to talk about the Indigo children, yes? A lot of you who will be watching tonight's uh, transmission are, are also Indigo children. And we'll be talking a lot of things about the Indigos that you, you haven't heard anywhere else. Unless you've been here at Crystal Savitar, yes? <laughs> Machiwa. And so we're just... I'm not sure if my chat is working. Let me refresh that. But we got lights, we have camera, and the action's going, and looks like we're live. Um, so thank you for being here with me. It's a great honor to have you guys share space together, because as other Christos Guardians, other star seeds and indigos, you can call them light workers or empaths, psychic people, who, when we come together, <laughs> This group is called the shield, the shield that came here as a group. We reincarnate just as the indigo children come here. They re we go through the fetal integration process. We go into, you know, you would say combine our DNA, our star seed DNA, which is actually literally from Sarias B and combine it with our human parents. So now you got, your mother's and your father's DNA plus another DNA from Sarias B, <laughs> what we call the Indigo Children, what we're going to be talking about tonight. And this is an exciting topic because it gets into the multidimensional, extraterrestrial worlds and, and energies and identity. And you're not going to get this information from Vice. Like if you type Indigo Children, that's one of the first results you're going to get. <laughs> a documentary supposedly about indigo children which that doesn't do the indigo children justice it's not limited to that information about the negative aspects of indigo children are there negative aspects how can they be negative if if they're highly evolved beings right well there we'll be talking about that tonight as well so i welcome you guys as we go into this peaceful dialogue about the indigo children extraterrestrials you know ones who are helping us with our ascension process so let me say hello to people in chat and I welcome you guys, beginners and advanced alike. And this is something that we're learning together. And, and it's, it, it's, it helps you in your spiritual journey when you know your identity. Not some fake identity or false information about the indigos or, you know, because that does a great service to the person speaking it, but also to the people listening to it. Machiwa. And you guys will hear truth and feel it. Or not, you know. Alright. Ancient uni Universal Divinity. Wonderful to see you too, Holy One. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. Yes. I, those are... Uh, my the, the new videos now are just representing the information. And so we focus... It takes me more time. It takes me like two or three days, but... It's worth it because I can't just make shorts all the time. That's You can't learn something such as, you would say, advanced ascension mechanics <laughs> through shorts. Okay, you, you just get general outlines, outlines and, and notes about it. You, you're not really learning unless you learn watch a full-length video. And that's what we'll be going through tonight. So, Sandra, hello, greetings, holy one. <laughs> Um, Frank, ask what my astrology sign is. I'm a Virgo. Thank you for asking. 9-9. Nine, nine. I had my birthday a few weeks ago. Susie Wilson. Hello, Thavian. Thank you for those positive vibes and emojis. Much respect. I like the unicorn, the star, the butterfly. The monarch butterfly is one of my spirit guides. <laughs> um, I don't really deal with spirit guides in my life now, but that's something that was a big part of my life year, a few years back. And that was one of the many, you know, spirits who worked with me. So much respect to those. 
Buenas noches, Vato. What's up, Cat666? Much respect, Holy One. Thank you for your positive vibes. It gets the show going. Sarah Holder. Hi, hope everyone is doing well. Stardust Goddess. Cool name. Namaste, Holy Ones. <laughs> Dimensional Legend says hello. We got Trista Pre for Prez. All right. Media's Touch Producer, Namaste. God bless the young people. Much respect. Thank you for sharing your space with us. DJ Phelps, DNA Activation Time. You said it, Holy One. <laughs> Ancient University. We got Starman in the house. Starman's here. What's up, Starman Vato? <laughs> um, he didn't say anything, but oh, there he is. <laughs> we got Celine. Welcome, Celine. And Indigo Wizard, you um, you guys, brothers and sisters, thank you for, for watching the communities back. And you guys, if you have any questions, you could you, you can ask for, um, for me. Just put the word Crystal's Avatar in it, and it will be highlighted. Um, otherwise, you can always get help and assistance from Starman, Celine, and Indigo. So those are our moderators. And thanks to all the those of you who are members as well. You're the one supporting Crystal Avatar, and, and that's how I'm able to do this work full time. And I, much gratitude to you. And you guys realize we're developing an indigo child community, a starseed community. And, and so you want to be part of that. You have incentive to be part of that. Thank you for being here. <laughs> uh, we have El, El Solomon. From Toronto, all right. Sarai's Blu-ray, Blu all right. You guys know this information. You know what's up. Connie Birch in the house. Liz Romero says hello to everyone. Ascended Master. Uh, Jay in the house. <laughs> thank you, guys. Much respect to you. And thank you for spending your Saturday with me and with us. And uh, let me light the incense as well. This is my lemon water. <laughs> my chew up. I haven't decided, but I may fast. I haven't eaten all day. I might fast the entire night too. We'll see. Um, I have to grab a, a roll of, of uh, charcoal right here. <laughs> I want you, uh... um, let me grab a, a, a roll. It's just a roll of charcoal. It takes a few seconds. Sorry about that. Because we got to have incense, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I usually get these by the case, you know, and uh, so I can get a whole bunch of these. I literally use incense resins every day because we're light workers and we have to protect our space. And this is one of the ways you protect your space. You use your own consciousness and intention as well, of course, and techniques that we're learning through this um, guardian teachings, which is um, was originally talked about from Guardian Speaker 1, Ashiana Dean, Yasha Ashiana. And a lot of you are studying the work already. Much respect to you and your journey. Um, it's, we're, we're not like, we don't know everything, but we're novices becoming adepts, becoming masters. That's what's already in your DNA. It's already what we're part of, my lighter. <laughs> I have a lighter actually. Sorry. Let there be light. Oh, yes. And we have a great community here, and sometimes we might get trolls or people who are being negative um, and abusing this opportunity instead of. You know, you guys can don't have to agree, but if you want to say something, just be respectful. That's all. When, as soon as you guys bring in hate or anger or 
or some, you know, you can talk about religion too. You're blessed. We're all part of God. And uh, just be respectful to other beliefs. We respect your beliefs. So please respect our beliefs as we talk about the Indigo Children tonight. <laughs> and there's some, it's not just our moderators. All of you guys can transmute any negative energy. Okay? And, and a lot of you will ask questions amongst each other. I, I uh, encourage you guys to ask questions. And that's how we learn, right? And if you don't put someone down because they're beginner, come on, you guys. And we don't, we don't uh, put down someone who disagrees with us or who has a distorted, you know, what we consider a distorted point of view when you're following, you know, systems of chaos. You know, that which represents chaos. We're, we're representing order. Okay? Not authority. Not elite. Uh, not an angry God. We're, we mean order. Okay? Which leads you to the path of joy. Who doesn't want to be existing in the energy of joy, the field, the consciousness of joy, of love, which is unconditional love? And we will talk about the 12 attitudes of mastery of an indigo child, of a light worker. You know, what, how do we behave in this consciousness? Okay? Like, because we came here as an agreement. We made an agreement to be here. And, like, we're following an actual covenant. It's called the Emerald Covenant. And that's where the, the, indigo children come out of well the indigos are actually on uh, what you call uh maharaji now the maharaji are the spirits or the souls from psoriasis a the sixth dimension that's the indigo ray um who come down to earth and and as the human indigos but the human indigos are actually the souls of the maharaji okay the maharaji project themselves just like it all beings do through the fetal integration process. There's also something called walk-ins. That's a little bit different. But um, you come through the earth that way. Just realize we're not the body. Okay? You have an extraterrestrial soul. Not all humans down here do. Some of them have an earth seed soul. Um, but the ones coming in from the higher evolution are coming from the soul level and into a 3D human body. So you're not the body. You're the uh, you're the soul that's inside of the body, and so they're also called indigos originally because of the um, aura that's around their body. When a clairvoyant person would see these indigo children coming in, or just around them, or whatever, whoever. They notice that they have mostly an indigo ray, which is the, um, it's coming out of your third eye, like a wormhole, a funnel, a funnel out the front and out the back. So it comes out this way and comes out the same way in the back. They're horizontal. Your chakra, your templar are horizontal um, vortices. And so what that does is creates an aura field around your entire body. It's like spherical, okay? More like a more like oval shaped or egg shaped, and it, and you have layers of these, and they're not just layers, but they're they're they go in throughout your entire body and around your body. They permeate your body and go around your body. So the indigo ray is the one that creates the indigo aura around your body, what the guardians call particle fields. Um, everyone else calls them aura. The guardians call them Particle fields. And so we have this um, lot of children coming in that a lot of psychic people who have their third eye turned on too, they would see these children with this aura, mostly, not only, but mostly an aura of indigo color. Um, now we talk about the Maharaji, they're blue humans. Their skin is blue, okay? <laughs> so it's been very rare instances, but some of the indigos being born here have also had blue skin. And you don't believe me, you just look up blue people or people born with blue skin. Type that up and find some pictures even. There's some people who still retain that. But just to understand, this is a spiritual war. Thank you for those hearts, holy one, and your kind energies. <laughs> this is a spiritual war. And it's an extraterrestrial, multidimensional thing too. Okay, so while we have indigos coming in, we have an opposing force of reptilians or Anunnaki coming in. 
they're not the only bad guys, you know, there's other ones like the Necromatons, but mostly it's a, the most largest populations of the fallen angels are the reptilians and Anunnaki. So that's the ones we get to deal with and we have been dealing with for, for you know, millions, billions of years. Now, for when it comes to humans and indigos, we would say millions. So, but the higher ups, the higher evolved um, worlds are in the billions. So we have this uh, ancient war and actually it was the Anunnaki who were specifically created to attack indigo children, to attack any guardians, um, such as the Lyrans or, or the Orophemes or the Azerites. They specifically went after them. And if they successfully murdered some of these guardians, like they, how they created something called the Azraelite, well, that was because they, they murdered and took the DNA of an Azerite and combined it with the reptilian or whatever. That creates a, a distorted being, a, a mutated being inhabited by a, a fallen angelic soul. Because realize these are races that have fallen. Their whole race has fallen. And then you have these races creating other races. Well, they're also going to be fallen. And it's their souls that are going to go into the lower souls. You know, they're going to be walking around in this world, but it's actually in dark avatar. Okay? So that's the spiritual war um, that we're involved with here on Earth. But also the, the indigo children are dealing with these beings as well. Okay? Um, so this is something that has happened in different periods of time. It's in modern day right now, but it happened before in a few hundred years ago in France. Um, these beings came in a few hundred years ago in um, Jeshua's time. We talk about God. We talk about Jeshua here, just not from the religion point of view. And much respect to your beliefs. And please respect our beliefs. Um, you have freedom of speech, and so do we. And um, we talk about it from a different point of view. And not everyone resonates with unity. Because that's where we come from, a space of love, a space of equality, a space of unity consciousness. Christ consciousness. When we say Christ, it's not the Christ from the Bible, it's the Christ from a, a universal Christ. It's a consciousness. It's a people. It's a DNA. And so the DNA, like we have the human DNA, which would only have literally a couple of strands. A few strands. The scientists call it double helix DNA. Well, the indigo children have... A minimum of 24 strands 24 compared to your double helix now we're not saying they turn have that turn on that's the potential that's fragmented in their DNA most humans have have nine strands fragmented in their DNA because their potential is 12 strand well an indigo potential is 24 strand minimum uh, they have up to 36 strands and all the way up to 40 48 strands. Okay, this is the potential, and that is what is coming in through the indigo children coming from the Maharaji blue humans. Now, they're blue hu humans, but not living on Earth. They're humans uh, living on Sarais B. Remember, there's a Sarais A, so we sp say specifically Sarais B. <laughs> they're blue up there, you know, in Sarais. Here, it's just a blue aura has nothing to do with the eye color or anything. It's the aura. Down here, it's the aura. Up there, you would see them as blue. <laughs> okay? And, and, and there are also something called the Azerites who have, who have very blue skin. They're more blue than the blue humans. <laughs> so, you guys see a blue angel, you know it's an Azerite. And it actually, it was the Orophim angel and the Azerite DNA that created the Maharaji DNA. So we're actually can be called Orphan Azerite Indigo Children because that's part of our genetic line. And, uh, and we're coming out of the planet Sarias B and same with Jeshua. Jeshua came to earth by going through Stargate 6, Stargate 6 of Sarias and coming through and incarnating not from a virgin birth like you learn from uh, distortion, but this is uh, same as everyone else. Through the fetal integration, no, actually, let me correct myself. 
The indigo type 1s, because there's three indigo children types. Type 3, type 2, type 1. 1 being the highest level, 2 being the middle level, 3 being the lower level. But they're all spiritual badasses compared to the human genome of 12 strand, which only have three strand awakened consciousness, actually. So, um, Jeshua was all, according to Ashana, you will hear her say it in the workshops herself. Out of her own mouth, you will hear her say this. All, notice the word A-L-L, -L, all. All indigo type ones come through as a walk-in. That means Jeshua was a walk-in too. So, now don't quote me on that. You know, there's some special circumstance about Jeshua because Jeshua was actually considered the last 12-strand awakened avatar on earth. Now, we have new avatars coming in as well, but just the same as badasses as Jeshua because they're also indigo type ones. There's actually hundreds, several hundreds, thousands, according to Voyagers 2, there's 750,000 indigo type ones who came in between the millennium, the beginning of the millennium to now. I mean, to actually after now, a few years after now, there's still being indigos type ones being born. Why? There's this huge thing called spiritual awakening happening on earth. Okay? Indigo children are part of that spiritual awakening because you have this high consciousness coming into earth, it raises the consciousness, the average consciousness on earth with the DNA and the consciousness coming in, it makes it available to other people. Now it's available for people to have a fourth strand and a fifth strand and a sixth strand because the indigos are here. Okay, that's how consciousness works. You kickstart you kick the earth's what you call particle speed by raising the the human consciousness it is this whole population of humans who are affecting the earth's vibration and vice versa so you to fix that to heal that to raise it you bring in higher evolved consciousness that's why we only come here star seeds and indigos only come here during an ascension cycle because we're part of the ascension cycle. So um, w when we look at the graph, I'll show you the diagram that the earth goes in a, this cycle. We're not talking about what earth scientists say. We're talking about the guardians say. The guardians tell us it's 26,556 year period. Specifically, you'll have people argue and say, no, it's 26 blah, blah, blah. Okay. According to the Guardians, again, um, Earth goes through a period of 26,556 years. And at the beginning of that period, you have an ascension cycle. And at the end of that period, that big period, there's another ascension cycle. Each ascension cycle, though, itself is lasts a few thousand years. Let me show that real quick. Machiwa. I just have to, have to make sure I have the diagram open. <laughs> Okay, so Earth goes through a period of, actually, there's another diagram I want to show you, but um, Earth has its own cycle, okay? And between this year, the beginning of it, 13,474 BC, wait, that might not, let me double check, because with the other diagram, and this, is, this helps you guys to understand where these indigos are coming from as well. I'll be talking about that this evening. Okay, I got it now. So, All right, we have this other diagram. This is the, it goes through a period of 26,556 year cycle. And then it will, it will restart a new cycle. It's not like all that consciousness was deleted. It starts a new cycle. So, yeah, I was, I'm glad I looked at this diagram, which started, this current cycle started at 22,326 years 
BC. That's when it started. And here we are way at the end of it, end of the cycle, which is called ascension, which from 197, 196 BC to 4230, you can see it's, it's almost, it's basically a 4,000 year period. And actually, let's look at this inset. It's actually a 4,426 year period, which is called a time continuum. This is spiritual science. Remember, we're talking about particle speed and angular rotation of particle speed. Um, well, this is, uh, numbers are, are, you could say, exact. We know exactly how long Earth cycle lasts, how long a, a dimension cycle is, how long a time continuum cycle is. So we can, we know the middle point of ascension was 2017. In 2017 was the middle point, just like here, way back in the day, you would have had a middle point and an end point. Okay, so indigo children come during these periods to help raise the consciousness to, to assist Earth herself. We're trying to help Earth herself and the humans on Earth to ascend. So I just wanted to give that, but while I'm on this diagram, I wanna show you where the indigos are coming because humans are way down here in this cycle of Earth. Indigos come from way up here. A minimum, they start from here or from higher ascension levels, ascended master levels. So they're coming from these levels and they incarnate way down into the human drama. So I just wanted to show that real quick so it's helpful to see. So basically, these higher level indigos are coming originally through a race called Maharaji in density two. So um, I said density, not dimension two. Density two is a universe made up of dimensions four, five, and six. As you saw in the diagram, there's different universes, different densities. And that's the carbon crystal density, not just carbon matter, it's carbon crystal. Um, so you could call it semi-etheric reality. Um, so pure, 100% etheric is like, there's no ceilings, there's no floors. It's, you're like levitating and shit and flying. Uh, you're not doing things like walking and stuff or traveling. You, you are a traveling being just, you're in an ether. You're living in ether. That's what the higher level, well, density two where Tara is, that's, crystal that's carbon ether you could say <laughs> carbon crystal so that's where we're coming from in Sarai's B it's our spirit our soul level in Sarai's B that comes into and be and is born within the human DNA so but we are still unique our mind our appearance is very similar to human but we're gonna look where um, our mind our thoughts our our energies are totally different so Human, well, Earth has not just humans. We have humans, a population of humans mostly, but we also have a small population of indigo children and a small population of Illuminati, what we call the Leviathan race, um, the dark illuminated ones. Uh, they're not human either, only. We're not, we're human, but part aliens and so are they. They're part um, Anunnaki. So, and that goes into the DNA strands. Um, when we talk about the Leviathan, we also talk about distortions of humans, like the Neanderthals. Um, those are not something that came before us. <laughs> it's literally what came after us as a distortion, like an attempt by these other races trying to create hybrids. It's a distorted, broken DNA. Um, Cro-Magnums. There's actually stages of Cro-Magnums. And so those are, those were healed. First of all, it was created by fallen angels, uh, this hybrid that we call Neanderthal. Well, the Neanderthal was healed in, into the Cro-Magnum stages. It was healed to create, to, to correct it. Because we don't just, guardians realize we're responsible for what's happening on earth. It's the guardian project. Even though there's fallen angels coming in and distorting it, we have to fix and heal things. We're responsible for that. Anyways, the Maharaji, 
are from another planet called Sarais B, and they came to Earth, and that's what you are. You, you, we're all coming, including Jeshua. We all came through Stargate 6 from Sarais. And we combine with our mother and father's DNA. They could be indigo children too, but not always. They're not always indigo parents. In my personal family, I believe that I have, I believe my parents are indigos. If I look at my mother and my father, definitely my father. I can't say they're actually both indigos. Maybe it's coming through my father. Because there's some things about my mom I'm not, that makes me doubt it. If she's an indigo or not. But my father, I have no doubt. My father's awakened. He's, he's had lucid dreams as these angel beings. And, and on, he's had many memories on other earth. But he has no context. His only context has been religion or whatever. He, he, you know, a lot of you come to those conclusions yourself. Because there's not much information for star seeds and indigos. That's where the crystals information knowledge, the inner Christ, the inner crystals knowledge comes in. The inner the guardians remind us of who we are. You'll learn about all the timelines and all the different races that were combined and what our DNA is and, and what we're what our purpose is. Okay? And that's what tonight's video is. Thank you guys for being here, <laughs> sharing the space with me. My chihuahua. We didn't put the incense on, man. It, it, I lit the charcoal, right? But I didn't put it on. Let's put it on. Which helps us cleanse our space. You, we're surrounded by... Um, on this planet is a majority of, of uh, chaos. So you always have to like actively in your lifestyle, cleanse and purify yourself and your space that you're in. That's why you gravitate to peaceful music or peace, you know, healthy foods because we want our space and our energies to be at their best. Here's some amber. And those haters out there, because I do have haters, um, I'm not high. I'm not smoking right now. Okay? What's up? And I actually don't need you to believe. Um, we have plenty of peaceful, loving people here. And that's who I consider my family. I, I love my parents, my family, my you call biological family, right? Um, but we also can acknowledge our spiritual family. We could also love and connect to our spiritual family. Sunset Dreams, Dan, DNA, oh, Go Team, yes, Team Indigo, what's up? <laughs> I think you pronounce Giyu, Gayu, sorry, I, I don't know all of your pronunciations. Got Game, 2001 to 2003 was a major, was major for me as far as self-realization and seeing things, hearing things everything like activated or elevated that's what we call um the these the sentence symptoms and according to the guardian material and ashiana's work uh we it started in around the year 2000 but mostly it started really making changes at the that mark you saw on the map 2017 that's when when the gates were opening what we call the stellar activation cycle and they've all opened but now they're starting to close. The first one closed in last year. And and I've already talked about these gates closing. I made I made Stargate videos, so check those out. <laughs> but uh yeah, this is a huge history that we're in, you guys. And uh we're just uh learning this together in this it's kind of like volatile energy on earth. Like that's happening. There is so much energy changes happening on earth. Uh, you know, between the dark ones and the light ones, because you're going to have some humans who are not, who don't resonate with this information. Um, they don't believe in it. They think it's nonsense. They think you're stupid or whatever. <laughs> um, 
And then you got others who are awakening, who are peaceful, who are, uh, like our friend said, uh, you're actually feeling symptoms and, and, and changes in your energies, in your body, and your ideas and beliefs. You're going through this change. This is what awakening is, you guys. You're changing not just your, your beliefs, but you're also changing your friendships, your relationships. <laughs> you're changing your diet. You're changing uh, old patterns within yourself. Okay? I can look at myself 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I was a totally different human. I don't even like my old self. You, you, know, I, you love yourself, but what I'm saying is I wouldn't like actively try to hang out with someone like I was back then. And I've shared that stories with me and I got judged for it. I told people how I went to Ukraine. I was only about girls and, and, and all that stuff. And I got judged for it. But I'm, I was telling you my story of what I used to be. <laughs> That's what I used to be. I don't, I, I don't even agree with all that stuff I did, of course. You know, we go, all of us, all of us are examples of learning from our mistakes, hopefully, and expanding our consciousness. It's li literally about energy. And she describes it, our teacher, Ashana, Yasha, uh, that you go through this expansion. It's not necessarily vertical. It's a matter of you expanding your morph morphogenetic field, which is your crystal body. You're, you're, you're like a paper mache skeleton, but you're adding more flesh to it and more and more and more to it. So it's literally like this. It's more like, you know, described as, it, it reminds me of Ukraine because I saw these little Russian doll things where it's with a small, tiny doll inside of a, another bigger doll and another doll. I got those for my mom because she, she loved it when I brought her something from my trips back then. I, I love these Russian dolls too, but that's just how the earth is or how the universe is it's within spheres within spheres within spheres and so is your crystal body your morphogenetic field is expanding like this this is what's really happening you're not going really vertical it's more of a uh, like a see this is what guardians do this is what people following law of one do they expand then there's other people following consciousness people following the creeds false creeds of chaos and they're doing the opposite. They're falling. And their crystal body, their morphogenetic field is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You're going the wrong way, homie. Okay? We're about awakening in this period of time. With the indigo children and, and the stargates opening. This is an awakening of... This is an opportunity for everyone to go through change. And hopefully choose law of one. All are equal. All are God. It's not a dogma. You don't have to agree with the law of one. Just like there's different laws of the universe. Okay, this is one of them. The concept that all are God. Okay, if you're in religion, you don't agree with that. You think that's blasphemy. So how can sinners be part of God? They're not. They're separate from God, they, th they say. Nothing is separate from God. The whole purpose of us learning about the 15-dimensional time matrix, which is itself what? A crystal body, a morphogenetic field, a universal one. You know, there's planet crystal bodies, morphogenetic fields. There's personal morphogenetic fields. So it's you. You're made of trillions of cells. Cells. Biological cells. And those are alive and conscious. You know, but you're they're inside you. You're a smaller piece of you. You know, the first dimensional piece of you. You have animal animal versions of you you have plant versions of you you have elemental fairy versions of you you know there's not just fairies and elementals but you see what i'm saying it's all within you know the guardians call it the particle you know it's the stages before you get to a quark stages before you get to the atom you know we're all of these things it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and more complex and more complex. Humans become astral beings. Astral beings become archetype beings. Archetypes evolve into, remember, I see I'm going this way, expanding instead of like this. Um, the archetypes become angelic beings. That's where angels are. They're a level of consciousness. They're a level of physical body, okay, which is semi-etheric. I just talked about that earlier. Part carbon, but also part crystal. Okay? So, 
your body changes and so does your consciousness and so does your awareness. As you expand, you have more memory of God, of oneself. Okay? This is purposely a polarized system. Creator, God, made it this way. Made it to be polarized. Made it to have also a parallel version of itself. You have a particle and antiparticle. Or particle and antiparticle. Magnetic, mostly magnetic, mostly electric. Earth is mostly ma magnetic. That's why we refer to Earth as a she. Feminine. Our parallel is more masculine. Electric. But it's part of who you are. You're part this and part that. Not only this, not only that. You're not just male or female. You're both male and female. And know and realize that uh, this, what people are calling in the New Age movement, um, twin flames, it's not necessarily a romantic thing. It can be, but not always. <laughs> twin flames are pairings of male female. So what does that tell you right there? You're not just limited to being a male. You're not just limited to being a female. You're a male female. You're a, there's actually, the guardians talk about four different genders. You have male, you have female, you have androgynous, and you have non-sexual. Or I should have said asexual. So you have different levels of experience as conscious being. All these people putting so much into the identity of God as being a male, and then there's a whole group of people saying, oh, God is a female, a goddess. Well, you guys are both being polarized. You see? You learn from these teachings that a higher evolved part of God is not limited to gender. Actually, gender is only experienced in the lower um, levels of, of evolutions, what we call spiritual evolution. We're in the lower levels of, of spiritual evolution. <laughs> Technically, it's a de-evolution. Because the original, we have an original called, let me show you real, real quick on a diagram. It's called the divine blueprint. That is who you originally are. Okay? If it's way up there in the, the Christed level, the, the 12th dimensional level, um, it's far away from what we are here. We're not even close to liquid light. Okay? See, we're distorted down here. We even die and shit. It's not normal to die. We think it is. We're told that from science and religion, you're supposed to die. That's normal. No, it's not, honey. Uh, everything beyond this is, is immortal. Immortal. Eternal life. They don't ascend through death. They ascend through transmuting and while they're alive. Transfiguration. And then transmigration. So here is uh, our... 12th dimensional level, which is the divine blueprint. This is the perfect body, the perfect consciousness, the perfect spirit. Okay? You have a perfect version of yourself called the nirvanic mind, called the, called the crystal avatar, because there's three different avatars levels, but this is the Christed level avatar um, and with your perfect body. Notice this is not in the 11th dimension. It's not in the 10th dimension. It's only in the 12th dimension. You have a perfect body that you can connect to through chakra, your Templar. Like most humans only have three chakra, red, orange, and yellow. Well, these star seeds and indigos are coming in with their green, blue, and third eye open. Remember, third eye is the angelic celestial level. These higher levels, your crown, your top of your head, and, and beyond is the archangel level. Well... You don't learn from the Bible anything about avatars. Well, the avatars are higher than that. This is also where you get your, your perfect body. And I just wanted to show that on the diagram again real quick. So, this is your heritage. This is our heritage. You're not getting your heritage or your identity from science. They don't even believe in the soul, much less these aliens and, 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 and how the Guardians talk about DNA as consciousness as Templar, as actual gateways to other dimensions of reality. That's how you're born here. That's how you get here, through Stargates, through time traveling. It's not called necessarily time traveling. You're just going from one frequency, vibratory oscillation to another. But from our point of view, 
in our movies and stuff, you would call that time traveling. But you realize it's just spiritual evolution, downstepping. Going to the past is downstepping your, your spiritual body and consciousness. Going to the future is upgrading your body and consciousness. So when you travel back and forth, you're changing your body and your consciousness. Unless you keep it in stasis in a UFO. A UFO can go through a stargate and keep the same matter form because of the technology being used. And same with the being who can activate their what's called your your Merkaba. Every human has the potential of create of a vehicle that can take them. That's how you get through a stargate. And your conscious body and your physical body can be used a stargate. You don't need no airplane. You don't need no UFO. When you evolve yourself. So um, that's what this conversation is about. It's about these higher evolved beings. Um, they're not, it's not even a new consciousness. Like we say it's new indigo children. No, it's actually an ancient consciousness. It's the trailblazers, the way showers of, of this time. Because they're from a future time. A higher evolved consciousness. They're, and they don't come up here in, with egos and they're not snobs. If you're an indigo who's a snob, you're not learning jack shit, honey. We we're, we're come from a space of love, of unity consciousness. We don't look down upon earth seeds. Because that's what it is. We have DNA of earth, earth seeds. We have DNA from the stars, star seeds. And there's specific starseed races called, there's one called Erantrian. There's a starseed race called Brenoa. Another starseed race called um, Hibaru. Um, there's another starseed race that a lot of people are familiar with the name called Metkilzedek. And finally, there's another starseed race, excuse me, um, that is part of this whole earth drama called the Uniseti. The or Antrians will have most are coming are the ones bringing in the gene code for brown skin. The Brenoa are the, the ones bringing in the gene code for the red skin, and then the Hibaru are bringing in the white skin, and the um, Mekilzadek are bringing in the yellow skin, and the black skin are being brought in by the Uniseti. Now, now that gets dispersed amongst the population, especially when the population is mixing with each other. Like, for example, I'm, my mom is white, but my dad is Hispanic. So I have these two different, biologically speaking, not my soul. You guys put so much stock in the body. When you're not limited to the body, you're, you're not the body. You're not the biological body. You're the spirit that came into the biological body. But you put so much F em emphasis here on earth about skin and DNA. Oh, am I one of those special DNA people? W what the hell, man? It's not about your body. It's a piece of you. It's a part of you. Is it important? Is it, you know, is it the most important thing? No, it's not. I am, you know, people brag about their DNA when, hello, it's about your, you're not your body. You know how many times do we get that message across? You're the soul. Not this. You're the soul, Vato. And, 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 and you're not even the earth DNA. You're not the earth DNA. You're not the American, the English, the French, the Italian, or, or African, or whatever. You're not from here. That is not who you are. That is what you see sitting across from you at your dinner table or your photo album, but that is not who you are. You're from another planet uh, that doesn't have brown skin or yellow skin or red skin or white skin or black skin. Doesn't have a face of a human being who looks extraterrestrial, who is uh, from another world, who has different body shape and form. You are not your DNA. It's a piece of it. Just realize that, man. Because look at me. You just think I'm a Mexican or some a Chicano or something. Hello. I'm not the body, homie. It's the same with the dark illuminated ones. They're not the body. 
You look at it, some uh, president, some dictator, some illuminate, dark illuminated one, they're not the body. They're not the bloodline. They're the soul that came into the body. What's up? Yeah, some of these are coming in as groups and go into certain race lines, but realize it's not always like that. So as soon as you, it's, if you can just understand that, it, the, and you know the the illusion of this identity being this is is nonsensical. Do you know what the body is? It's dimension one. Dimension one contents. Subatomic contents, chemicals, molecules. That is not who you are. It's a little piece of what you are. We could look totally different. You know, one indigo could be black, another indigo could be brown, another one white, another one red, another one yellow. You're not the body. So stop tripping on your DNA, what, what bloodline am I? It's not about that, it's what planet you came from it, and which came into the body. You see how that works? Even in a walk-in, it's not the physical body. A walk-in is the consciousness coming into the body that was created on Earth. The bodies are created are, are, are vehicles on Earth. They're little dimension one bodies. So your consciousness is who you are. That is what your identity is, and that's where your origin is from. The Consciousness of indigo human indigo children are coming from Sarai's beat. That is your identity. You are Syrian, homie. Jesus, Jeshua, it was a Syrian. Some of the uh, pharaohs of Egypt, some of the priesthoods of Atlantis and Lemuria are Syrians. See, it's kind of like uh, when, when you look in, in judging people, you're, you don't know what the F you're talking about. And most people are into the physical and no, a lot of people don't even believe in spiritual existence. They think it's nonsense. <laughs> so remember, it's not a religion thing. It's not a science thing. It's a spiritual science, and you will never understand truly what is God without spiritual science. Or yourself, or what angels are, what demons or fallen angels are. When you're not considering or, and understanding a multidimensional reality, every being is, has, let's say, a human on earth. We're made of three dimensions, not only third dimension. Your body is made of dimension one. You, you got your spirit and the energy made of dimension two. You know, dimension, well, what is a Lemurian? It's a strand two. Atlantean is strand three. So when you got someone bringing in strand four, the heart, strand five, the throat, and strand six, they're not from Earth. They're beings from other worlds. What's up, uh, indigos? Indigo vato locos. <laughs> I just had to scroll up, and I already lost it. There was someone else who donated, I thought. But now we have much love from Life Monique. Thank you, Holy One. Thank you for supporting Crystal's avatar. <laughs> and if you guys like this information, if you're learning anything at all, please consider donating either through online, like a super chat, or you can click on the donation link I put at the top. It takes you right to the donation to, my, to Crystal's avatar. Thank you so much, you guys, for, for that. And you can also support this through um, artwork. Like, I sell artwork and crystals on my Etsy shop. So check that link below. And thanks to Starman, who usually puts the links, or Indigo, or Celine. Thank you guys so much um, for being part of this live on your Saturday night and learning about this identity, true identity. You're going to get, this is a unique point of view on Indigos. You ain't getting this from New Age. The New Age is clueless. They don't know any of the science behind it. They're not talking about um, all these different you know, aspects of indigo children. And that's okay. 
but it's really not okay because it's 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 just ca causing a disservice. And you guys, I don't have to convince you of anything. You guys are psychic too. You you guys are seeing these beings in these worlds too. You you know for yourself. You can check for yourself. You don't need me or Ashana. You guys can learn perfectly from your own inner crystals. Christina Garcia. Thank you, Holy One. Much respect to you. Thank you for supporting Christmas Avatar. We have LS Dreamers. Thank you so much. And he also has a message. Hope, hope you all are having a good night. Love this channel. Might have to... Might have to buy some of that merch. Thank you so much. And you guys, I, I'm like shocked myself that I still haven't made t-shirts and cups. What am I waiting for? I just get so busy. I totally space that out. But yeah, you're right. I, that reminds me. I got to do that. Like even have a cup that says Machiwa, right? What's up? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, Starman, for the links. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Indigo Wizard, so happy to see you. LSD Blessings, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've never tried that before. I've tried uh, ayahuasca and, of course, the mushroom on your salad. And uh, what's that one called that's really fast, really quick? DMT. I've tried that. But not LSD. What am I missing? <laughs> Much respect. Mac Rambo. <laughs> Send some love to Mac Rambo, you guys. Send some smileys and happy joy. Thank you, Celine. Thank you, sister. Happy to see you. I wish we all lived close together. We all hang out and go do stuff together. It's indigos, right? <laughs> Me and Starman used to live real close to each other until I leave, left Tucson, but that wasn't for any reason except my spirit was taking me somewhere else. <laughs> but yeah, I got to meet Starman in real life. Uh, Tamara, I saw a cat jump out of my... Is that supposed to mean neighbors, right? Neighbors tree and turned into my neighbor and walked away. Well, there's a few explanations how that's possible. Um, it's either done through shape shifting in the DNA, which obviously humans don't shift shape shift, shift so it's not human. Or it's done through magic, which also is usually not good. And historically, it is cats. You talk about, you mention the cat, so it's usually witches doing the cat thing. Not always. I, I'm not going to say always, but it's either that or the other. Usually, it's not a good thing. Why do you need to shape shift or be a different shape? Why not just be your shape you are? You know, the guardians aren't trying to trick people and hide amongst the population. I mean, who knows, you know, I saw the same thing. I've seen a beautiful, sexy woman who was shape-shifting from a cat. And not in 3D life, but it was partially, I saw a cat run across my path, but then that same night, I saw the, the cat woman thing happen. So yeah, that was way, that was like 10 years ago when I was into the occult and shit, and I, I wasn't smart back then. <laughs> But uh, I've come a long way, obviously. I got into the crystals knowledge and made a huge change in my life. So, But yeah, that's that's just to answer your question. It could be either through magic or through something like a reptilian type of creature, Anunnaki creature. Um, so, And that's a high-level being who can actually change their molecular structure. Rain. I'm hearing raindrops. Holy cow.
let me see. Chestine Montgomery, is it a glamour or actual body? You're, you're still talking about the shapeshifter, right? No, it's an actual molecular thing. Um, the magic obviously is not. The magic is an illusion. Uh, a magical shapeshifting. But the actual literal shapeshifting is... Actually, you'll learn that all beings who are in the etheric level... Wow, one, one, one. 111 people online. Check that out. <laughs> yes. You guys, I saw several numbers already today, and that's just another one. But all beings who reach, finally get to the 7th dimension, 8th dimension, ninth dimension, that's density 3, holographic universe 3. When you get to that level, all beings will be able to shapeshift. Because you won't have a, a body anymore. You'll just be made of energy, and you can just change your shape. So that's interesting, right? You have your, your generic racial strip, uh, shape, but then you can shape shift at will at those levels. So it's not even a special DNA at that point. Everyone will be able to do it. And uh, quite frankly, all humans will be able to do that. And, you know, it's in your future DNA. In your 7th, 8th, ninth, and higher DNA. So it is pretty high level, though. And... and um, we have a long ways to get there for uh, density three, but think about it. Indigo children are coming from um, dimension six, but because, you know, that's the indigo ray, that's the sixth chakra, that's the sixth dimension, but we actually come from way much higher than that. And so we're coming from, I showed you earlier, a minimum of 13, 14, 15 dimension or the ascended master levels. And, Ashana talks a lot about the DNA, and it's hard to understand. It's pretty complex, right? But it's important to learn some of the basics of, like, for example, you'll learn from Kathara. Kathara 1, Kathara 2, you're going to learn the basics of the spiritual science. And you'll, you'll start to feel it as science. You're like, damn, man, this is, I don't know if I understand all that, right? <laughs> so, yeah, it's just amazing, and I find myself even being more interested in science as I'm as I'm learning this material. Like, I want to know more of what the physicists are saying here on Earth, so I can have more vocabulary to explain. And because it's not just about reaching people in religion, it's also reaching people in science that is distorted here. It's limited here. Okay, remember, the science still hasn't figured out the soul, which is a scientific thing. You know, but there's so much distortion on Earth. Most of societies were based on the foundation of science, of of a uh, religion. Okay, up to two hundred years, a few hundred years ago, then it started to be science was taken over. Science became the new god. Science is the new guiding light. Hello, that's like going from matriarchy to patriarchy. You're not learning it all. You're just getting a piece of it. Okay, you want all of it. It's spirit and science. That's how you explain consciousness and the soul and God. Not from only religion, not from only science, which doesn't even talk about the soul, right? <laughs> but they, they find life or they can find, you know, most scientists in the old days only thought it was carbon matter, but the, the quantum physicists realize more. You know, we still have string theory saying it's one dimensional, but... You guys, everything is three-dimensional. Everything is three-dimensional. You're in, you're in uh, density one. You're made of one, two, and three. You're in density two. You're made of four, five, and six. It's a triage of dimensions. Your body is made up of three dimensions, not just one, not just two, three. Okay, so beings living in Tara... They're made of three, they're three dimensional too, but four, five, and six dimensions. These etheric beings are made of, are also made of three dimensions, but of six, seven, and eight at different variations of it, different quantities of it. Like humans are mostly the quantity of dimension three, but we have quantities of dimension two in us and quantities of dimension one in us, specifically our body, which creates your catheric, uh, the red aura around you, which is very close to the skin, 
very close to the skin is your what is making your body um, so it is the higher portion your or orange aura your yellow aura your green aura it keeps getting more and farther out until you get one your 15 dimensional chakra is way out in outer space <laughs> so that that starts to drive home the concept of you all being one when you start seeing your your crystal body get turn into a collective crystal body turn into a planetary crystal body turn into a universal and then the cosmic crystal body so you see how we're all one science doesn't even see that shit yet they're all in this little, little individual point of view most humans are in a individual point of view but we're a collective you'll still have your own vision and personal consciousness but right next to it you also have constantly you'll have well in, in um, density two, you're going to have 12 together. All together, you're going to have 12 other selves in your understanding, in your knowledge, in your perception. And by the time you get to the higher ones, because that's super consciousness. That's called super consciousness. And then you develop into something called, you, you have like the planetary consciousness. And then you have a galactic consciousness. And then you have, you know, this is levels of yourself. And, and, and that's what the, trips you out. These indigo children, these blue-skinned uh, Maharaji from Sarai's B, you know, they're, they're ancient. They're, they're from, they come from billions of years of heritage. Um, because you, you get way up there in, in, the, in density five, which is antimatter. Okay, we have antimatter beings coming here. That's what indigo children, they're made of antimatter... <laughs> Not anti, ante, a n t e is a difference. There are two different things. Ante matter is, is density five matter, and and I'll show you that real quick. And this is where you, the consciousness of indigo children are coming from, um, which became eventually the Maharaji, which became the human indigo child. So I thought I heard thunder. Now it's really died down, but it, I know it's, there's still a little bit of moisture out there. So this level that I mentioned where the, the indigos are coming from, it's called antimatter, which is a plasma, hot plasma, thermoplasmic crystal gas body. And so this is where indigo children come from, antimatter and beyond into the cosmic fields which are not dimensionalized these are not dimensionalized um, like we have in a time matrix um, but the other like indigo type ones come from way up here like Asha Ashana herself our teacher she's coming from the Eka she's what you call an Ekar same with Jeshua was an Ekar and Jeshua won and so Indigo type one, I mean. And well, he was also Jesus, uh, the first Jesus. There's three different Jesus. <laughs> There's the 12 strand Jesus, who's the real one. There's a nine strand fake one. And a six strand, another six strand fake one. Uh, so though, there's only one original Jesus. The other ones were meant to trick history, the timeline, and the, and what the work was done. But I just wanted to show you that antimatter real quick. Uh, we're coming from, the indigos are coming from antimatter and beyond. So, it ends up in Sarias B and density two and then into density one of earth. So it, it's, it's high level Eckhars, uh, ascended masters and coming into the earth drama with their DNA potential DNA and consciousness to help raise the consciousness of earth. It's a big deal. You guys being an indigo child and starseed. It's not some just lofty high pie in the sky type of concept. That's hard to, you know, conceptualize. Uh, there's a spiritual science behind it. And I'm, I'm grateful for you guys for being here. And I, I personally want to get lit tonight, 
like I haven't the past couple of weeks, but tonight I do. I feel the the desire to. I don't need another charcoal. What am I doing? <laughs> if anyone else wants to get lit, show it to me in in chat. If it's an overwhelming thing, then we're gonna get lit. I know some of you don't like that, but others of you do. I'm just adding some more incense. I'm putting gold copal and white copal. I'll put a little bit more amber. I actually need to, to order more incense because I'm getting low on some of it. And I want to make sure I have my dragon's blood. I think my dragon's blood is in my storage in, in Goldfield, Nevada. <laughs> see star man wants to get lit yeah <laughs> Woohoo! that's all i need as long as my star man brother wants to get it <laughs> i'm sure indigo wants wants to get lit maybe <laughs> you guys don't have to get lit i don't have to get lit it's not about having to Let me grab my pipe. What's up, homies? My fellow indigo vatos. <laughs> so it, it is pretty cool, man, when we can learn about our true heritage. And when I started learning about this stuff, I was so happy. Celine's getting lit. <laughs> Amanda's already taking a hit. <laughs> cough, cough, hashtag. <laughs> and it's funny. It, it's happy. It, it's, it's, you know, positive vibes. We're not being judgmental and saying you can't do that or you shouldn't do that. What are you talking about? Excuse me. It literally activates or not. What it does is it literally uh, it, it boosts. That's the word. It boosts what you already have for a little while. Um, sometimes it could be too boosted or too intense, but not to me. It's like I do this in my own personal time normally. Um, since I, you know, I, I'm not saying I'm cured of what I had before. But it became so marginal, and so I was able to smoke again. So, whoa! Didn't mean to throw my glasses across the floor. Which is one of the things I need to do is get new glasses. <laughs> these are still the old, same old glasses. These things, these will actually come out if I drop them the wrong way. And uh, it's all about energy. The whole reality is made of energy. Your body is made of energy. It's uh, some of the science knows that that it's not physical, that it's vibrating. Nothing is actually solid. And and I wanted to say about that indigo ray. When I was on mushroom, you know, for your salad. I got to be careful what I say for the algorithm. Um, I saw the indigo ray. And you guys can argue about it, but there's no reason to argue. This is the blue ray. This is indigo ray. This is violet. In blue, indigo, violet. Blue, indigo, violet. Indigo children don't have blue auras indigo children have indigo auras so think of the color blue right now in your mind close your eyes and think of blue sphere now think of a uh, you can think of a sphere or think of a six-pointed star okay whichever one you can ma imagine 
A sphere is usually easier to imagine. A blue, a blue sphere and a violet sphere combining together. Now you have blue violet, indigo. An indigo ray is like a little bit purplish in it. It's not purple. Purple is a different color. It's bluish, purplish. This is what we're describing as the indigo ray. And I saw it, man. I've seen it lucidly. Beautiful color of indigo around me, around everything in, in my space. So I've seen it, and it's no freaking blue. It's definitely got purplish color in it. What's up? And that's how the name started to begin with. People started noticing um, these kids. And, and, and you guys, you can be grown-up indigo children. You don't have to be called an indigo child. You're an indigo adult. That's just because it was thought of, you know, I just, I just know there's some confusion around indigos, and I just want to clear up some of the confusions. You can be an indigo adult. It's not limited to being a kid. As a matter of fact, you could have had a very bad childhood growing up, and you didn't have any psychic abilities turned on, or you were just lost and confused in, in your maybe abuse, and you, you were shut off as an indigo. You were sleeping as an indigo. Uh, you didn't know you were anything different. You just, you just thought you were messed up. And yes, some indigo children can become messed up because they're what's called an indigo type 3. Are you having an angel and devil in your body? Does it feel like you're having an angel and devil in your life? Like sometimes it's beautiful and, and divine, and other times it's hateful and angry and twisted. Well, that's what an indigo child type 1, um, type 3 is. Now, the indigo type 2s are don't have this issue because they're not... They're not incarnates um, th that are doing a host matrix. Indigo type 3s are doing a host matrix, which ha refers to combining DNA, which means two, two souls in your body. So this is a lot of people are dealing with this. This is what an indigo type 3 is. You actually have a Nephilim soul inside your body with you, with your Orophim soul. So the whole point is to raise the consciousness of the Nephilim. It was an agreement between you and the Nephilim. You're trying to help heal the Nephilim. So, it, what you're doing is something very beautiful. And think about it. You're helping another race heal. You're helping the Nephilim heal. You guys, we, the indigo children come from the blue flame. Now, if you're... there's and, and, and since we have some of the blue flame that has fallen, we are offer healing assistance to those who have fallen. In religion, there's no forgiveness. You go to lake of fire forever and punished and separate from God. Bullshit. Guardians don't play that game. That's a false creed, a, a chaos thing. There is forgiveness. You, it's not even the word forgiveness. You don't have to forgive something that's unforgivable. There's nothing unforgivable. What I'm saying is we, we offer the healing to a fallen angel. You know, the Nephilim murdered us. They murdered the humans in seeding one. The Nephilim are giants. Superhero. They kicked our asses. They annihilated us. But we're still helping them now. Indigo tight trees, what you're doing is freaking amazing. Purify. Cleanse. Purify. Because some of the medicine f could be twisted. That's why you, you feel the chakra in your hand. I feel it. Put it over. Usually it's your right hand. This is magnetic, left hand. Right hand is electric. It doesn't matter if you're a lefty or righty or ambidextrous. This is still your magnetic hand. This is still your transmission hand. Transmute any negative or unwanted energies. 
see, feel, psychic energies, vision, you know, visions of... When I say visions, I mean you can see things in your imagination more clear. That's what the third eye is, seeing. So this medicine helps you see. So you put that intention there, seeing and purifying and, and gratitude. Throw gratitude in, in everything you work with. Throw love into it. Love, love, love. Gratitude, you know, protection, whatever you want to say. This is Matt, this is a teacher, this is medicine, just like any herb that will help you get take care of a of a sickness or disease, even cancer. Machiwa. If you drink water right away, you don't cough as much. Sometimes I don't cough at all. <clears throat> Usually sit in it for a moment. Like literally, close your eyes and, and relax your hands. Let, let them be limp. Don't do anything with your hands. I usually do a mudra. I might as well do a mudra while you're relaxed. But keep your, try to keep your spine straight. And be aware of your, your chakras are right in the middle of your body, obviously beside your hands and feet, but they're right aligned here. So perceive along your body where you're feeling sensations. Don't you know where your locations are? This is your third chakra, your heart chakra, your throat chakra, your third eye chakra, your crown chakra. It's all in the middle. So become aware of your middle. I could already feel my forehead area. I might take a second hit because my tolerance already went down because, or up, up or down, whatever. <laughs> because I, I started taking it from my sleep. Now I can sleep no problem. I mean, I, I started doing it without the medicine too. I, I know I can do it either way. So, yeah, just to, I, I'm just going to do, whoa, it feels good, man, it feels good, it's starting to light up, that's why we call it getting lit, getting lit, things are lighting up, you feel it lighting up. You guys, I might be speaking light language, okay? Sometimes. Because it, it boosts me, now I'll, I, you know. <laughs> and, and you guys, when you are on a spiritual journey, you're on a spiritual path, uh, hello, you explore consciousness. And this is one of the ways you explore consciousness. Not only, obviously, you're going to learn these Ashana techniques. You know, the techniques in the material. Maybe you have your own chakra meditations or visualizations. We're all practicing with our mind. You must, you know, you want to, I don't want to say you must, you want to explore consciousness. You got to check the boundaries of consciousness. You have to, be, not, there we go, have to. You want to become a master in consciousness. Become a master in energy, which is the same thing. What's up? But we say energy still because that's something you feel. Okay? And I, as your brother Thavian, I just try to remind you that what you're feeling, that energy, it's alive. Revere it as that. See, I'm already, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I need another one. This is already doing good, but I want to go the extra mile. I think I feel differently on Saturdays. On Saturdays, I'll do this. On Tuesdays, I won't do this. So if you don't like this, don't come on Saturdays. I love you. 
watch some of this and skip the other parts, I guess. <laughs> it's all about love. And we're definitely, we'll start acting playful and, and all like mushy and stuff. <laughs> mushy. <laughs> You know, loving all the time. It doesn't. I don't mean like a sexual love. It can be that too. <laughs> but I'm talking about this joyous love. Like you love all your brothers and sisters like this. You know, I love all of you. Like a, 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 a true, genuine love. Like the medicine helps me become more laid back. More more caring. More, more humanity. Like you're focusing on the on this, on a group, on a people, not just yourself. And we have nothing against religions, you know, honestly, we, we are talking about uh, the timeline of earth, what has happened to your people. And, and obviously you're not aware that these Alien beings, what the guardians call fallen angels, have done. Like, like, you have the God-given right to know. This is not dogma. You have the God-given right to know this knowledge. Okay? For some of you, I love you, but some of you uh, say, if you go look for information outside the Bible, you're sinning against God. You guys, something is wrong with that statement. Think about it. Something is very wrong with that. You understand from these teachings that it is, there isn't your religion called Jehovah, or maybe it's Allah, or maybe it's uh, something else. Like the Hindus call the creator God Brahma. I just, dude, right now, right now, it reminded me of something. What is the violet flame called? Because the blue flame is Elohai, the gold flame is Seraphi, the violet flame is Brahma. Brahma. Violet flame. Hindus, com people. Original Hindu people were a Magi Grail line. They came from the Violet Flame. They're a Violet Flame race. So, but we're not we're not condoning uh, Hindu gods. We're not talking about that. Uh, all religions, including Hinduism, have been distorted by fallen angels. Hear me again. All religions on Earth have been distorted by fallen angels. They no longer represent the, the sacred universal law of one. You don't acknowledge the guardians. Uh, you're against the guardians. You're against life. You're against earth. You're against humans. You're against everything. Okay, you guys, no more, that's it, that's enough. Like, I could just be down to earth with you guys. I am anyways, but I feel like saying that right now. Oh my gosh, dude. My freaking, specifically my left foot, my both of my feet, but my left foot is really on fire. Like you, I feel the energy, the consciousness in my in that foot chakra down there. You guys, in the bottom, in the middle of the bottom of your feet is a chakra, not between the heel and and the other part of your foot, the, the shit, right in that, right in that area, like a woman's back, you know, under your feet. Uh, well, that's a chakra. 
which connects you to not your ass chakra, the one below your feet, called the Christ chakra, the crystals chakra. It's not the technically they don't call it the ass chakra; they call it the root chakra. Um, but I felt like saying ass chakra, you know. Sorry. It's a type. Of, it's a level of consciousness. You know, if you're in survival mode, if you're like totally broke ass, it, maybe you're homeless. I was homeless. Uh, maybe you're having uh, fear. You're living in fear because someone's uh, in your house is very abusive or whatever. If you're living in fear and survival, this is the butt chakra, man. Excuse me, root chakra. <laughs> it's a level, I guess, of consciousness. Who wants to be stuck in, in fear and, and survival mode? Like always being worried about your life. Like, like, you, like you feel like you're in danger. Who wants to be in fear and guilt and shame? Uh, you see? The lowest experience the human want, wants to experience. Someone's te sending you into the world. Someone's preaching into the world. Someone's speaking into the world. Hate and fear and shame and guilt. Transmute that shit, at, homies. You're real, you're real light. You get the real God. Because there's fake ones called Jehovah, Brahma, Allah. I love you if you believe in these systems. But realize, please, I'm asking you. I'm, I'm asking you. Please notice. Please notice that your God is angry. Notice, just, just notice that your God murders babies. Just, just notice, kind of write it down a list of things that God's known for, uh, slaughtering entire races of people, not just one. Did you notice? These are all horrible, despicable things. Uh, what is a chosen people? That's racism. Bible teaches you chosen people, the Hebrews. I'm not trying to create a problem with people as races in modern times. I'm talking about historically speaking, right? Historically speaking, Jehovah God, Allah God, Brahma, these, these are dark, wicked beings. They speak it, they do it. And you... Uh, write me these long freaking messages uh, defending this wrath, this murder, this sacrifice. They will, they come up with some pretty interesting, what do you call that? You know what you call that, right? It's backwards. <laughs> Holy ones, think about it. It's backwards. When the inner Christos, the inner God, and the law of one, because all are one, it's a sacred law. It's not something I made up. Fabian didn't make it up. There's a whole bunch of knowledge about the law of one. Okay? Because I've been accused of that. You know, I'm, just, I'm just making up shit. Hello, there's a lifetime. You can take workshops and learn these books and, and teach and learn these techniques. It's a whole encyclopedia of vatos of knowledge. I'm not just making shit up. Just check. And law of one isn't an earth thing, honey. It's an everywhere thing. And when you got some God who's pissed off and, and, and lowering down women and, and demanding sacrifice of animals and humans, uh, what the F is your mind? Like, legitimately, where is your heart? Find it. I don't see it. Where is it? All are God. All are one. Creator created all. How could you say the omnipresent creator of all? Yes, we believe in one God. 
not a pagan and many gods or goddesses. That is separation, that is fragmentation, not the whole, not the unity, not the united God. You want to be uh, pieces of God, separations or inequalities of God. It is all bullshit. Smile, love one another, uh, be happy, have kindness. Who cares about skin? I love you. I love all of you. Just love everyone, everything, even rocks. Give love to a rock, to a blade of grass, to a fairy being, to an angel, to an archangel, to yourself. Love. Wow. wow. What a concept. So simple. So basic. That's how you connect to God. Yes. Not through religion, not through a middleman, through yourself. Remember, it's law of one. It's a law, a sacred universal law, not a Thavian law, not an Ashiana law, not somewhere law and some other place law. No, everywhere law, universal law. All are God. So if you want to go for, away from that, you don't want to agree with that, you want to go against that, well... You have free will to do that. God gave you free will here. You, now you can think for yourself and do for yourself. You can make mistakes or not. Mistakes? How can you have a mistake in all our God? Understand the spiritual war? All of God's original intention. God's original source has always, is always, love. Joy. No judgment. Unity. All are equal. Love all unconditionally. No matter their skin color, their wealth color, their you know status in, in life and amongst others. They want entitlements. They want titles. They want to be rulers. They want to be kings. They want to dominate. They want to control against God, against humans, against everything. It's an attack on you. You don't feel this energy? Wow. What happened to you? You're dead in spirit, dead to God, don't know what is God, don't believe in God, don't love God, don't seek joy of God, only anger, only sacrifice, only uh, put down woman. What are you doing? You're a sinner, you're guilty, you're shameful, you're hateful, what? You're not worthy of God. You haven't been agreed with this sacrifice, this murder. So I, I'm sorry, I, 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 I'm not going that route. That's not God for me. Maybe for you, you choose this with your own free will. Us and others and real indigo children speaking the real truth of God, representing God. It's not about one person or a savior. I, we love Brother Jeshua, of course. Sananda Melchizedek, that ancient uh, indigo type one. Indigo type one. The last 12 strand avatar. So we're recognizing this. In this age of ascension, I showed you when it started, how long it's going to be. Ascension, spiritual evolution. Most of you will have to go through the death cycle to ascend because you haven't gotten that high in your uh, Merkaba. You need your Merkaba star, homie, of your fourth strand and your fifth strand. You need to get those Merkabas. Uh, Realize this higher evolution this higher spirit, higher consciousness in your present life here in 3D. You can be 4D and 5D and 6D and beyond. What's up, holy Christ? 12 strand avatars. Much respect to you, Christos, inner Christos, inner God. We are all this inner God, the thoughts of God, the mind of God, the life of God. You are other selves, many selves. 1,728 other selves and more. Depending if you're an earth seed, star seed, you could have a few thousand. Machiwa. 
I am learning, you're learning, we're becoming these masters in Christ, the real Christos, Avatar, Machiwa, Holy Gods, Holy Avatar, Christ Star. Say with me, Holy Ones, I am Christ Star. Yeah. I am Christ Star. I am Christ Star. Machiwa. <laughs>
12 Attitudes of Mastery. I'm going to make a video about this soon. I love you. Chihuahua. <laughs> Blessings from the Guardian Alliance. I was still. <laughs> you know, we deal with extraterrestrial, archangelic, angelic beings, my Chihuahua. Like in other worlds of our, you know, you, you become psychic, you become aware of these different levels of yourself. It's beautiful. It's magnificent. What are you doing? <laughs> We're leering cat people, man. We're damn sexy. I'm just saying. They're fine. They're fine. Leering's cat people. <laughs> you know, you guys remember Natiri? Wasn't she freaking hot? And, and beautiful? Yeah, Natiri. She was... Uh, in the movie, they're called, uh, you know, this, like, they live in, they're extraterrestrials, man. Of course they are. What's up? But what the movie doesn't tell you, it's it's like the highest level spiritual beings in, in the human, human genome that we evolved to in the super far future. We're going to be these mighty beings. We are these beings now, but we just haven't made all that DNA activated yet. So we don't work. It's in you. And it's, it's and you activate it over time. You don't get just all of it. You're meant to experience it. So you got to go through these different timelines to have it in your memory. Now it's uh, you kind of like zoom out from that level. And then you can see these higher soul levels. And then you can see these higher over soul levels. Like I've been through that. I've, I've seen these beings and it's so freaking divine and sacred, more perfect worlds. And, and I was able to awaken to that for a little while. And then I go back out of the dream state or medicine state, you know, visions. Because I, I, I literally see visions and, and, and these beings all around me. And, um, and these members, because you see it more as part of who you are. Like, like it's like a forgotten memory awakened. Like... It was always there, but there was blocks in your memory or you didn't activate those memories because we're in a distorted world here on Earth. It's a distorted world. And so we're trying to awaken it from a dark place. This is a dark place, holy ones. It's mostly darkness here. It's all it's falling. And some people will ascend because they really have awakened themselves in this in this unfortunate, you know, demise of humanity, because we've already been wiped out, freaking twice already. You know, the guardians will do this again in another period, or, you know, because the angels, the guardian angelic nations, they love. They love all life. They love all of God. And they want to, and they understand darkness as being, uh, needing a healing. So the guardians are always about healing. We become masters in healing. There should be no diseases on earth at all. There should be no aging on earth at all. I mean, there's reasons, but we learn how to master it. So, I love you guys. Bless you. <laughs> Yeah, baby. <laughs> Thank you guys for sharing space with me here on Crystal's Avatar. You're awesome. And I'm just uh, grateful to be here with you. It's blessed. And you guys realize that this video will be made available to watch later. So you can always come and study it again if you want. And uh, I encourage you to watch some of these lives because that's where you get to see the real energy like right in the now like our one of these brothers wrote earlier uh like i, I forgot how you worded it but downloads more downloads <laughs> yes downloads from the guardian alliance i love you yeah so priced yeah 
Yeah, see, uh, you know why religious people or even Christians would get so pissed off. They shouldn't be get, getting pissed off. What are you doing? What's wrong with it? You know, something's not right when you're pissed off. <laughs> Yeah, because they, they they don't want everyone to be access God. Only select few. Only believers. That's the only ones they'll deal with. And they don't consider the rest of the world. It's so twisted thoughts, man. It's freaking dark thoughts. <laughs> but to some of you, it's holy. This is what you call God. And so we learn about these indigo children and it's a, it's a, it's, it's the people or the part of God that is coming in trying to help heal the fallen consciousness. This is a disease, man. It's, it's, religion is almost like a disease. It's anti-God. It's anti-Christos. But saying that it's Christian or whatever. Wow. If I was to describe like a, a devilish person, no, a, let's say a, a, like a fallen angel, which is what? A divine being who's dark in his thoughts, which is against God, against life, against, it's a vampire. It's not blessed. It's not holy. It's unholy. You're worshiping unholy consciousness. When you follow Jehovah, uh, these pissed off angry gods like Jehovah and Allah, and we we talking about beings that destroy and cause desolation, cause sickness and famines. Oh my gosh, a cruel God. It even calls itself cruel, a cruel God, a burning anger, burning fury, venge, death. War, genocide. This is this. This is Jehovah. This is Allah. This is um, what the f man. You guys worshiping unholy. Just because religion is big or some shit makes it right. And it didn't happen recently. It's been going on since Atlantis, fifty thousand years ago. See, you get to learn from your future selves, these teachings, the guardians, they're higher selves of you and your brethren, you know, fellow humans, fellow indigo children. We're these holy ones. And we're going through this, like there's humans going through awakening. Well, the indigos are awakening. Their power, their DNA, which is mighty, are, you're an indigo. Your consciousness is unbelievable, holy ones. What do you think I keep calling you holy? You are divinely, inherently, naturally, genuinely powerful. You have a mighty, mighty potential. But you're being seduced by these unholy religions who are teaching you dark shit. You got it freaking backwards. You're attacking and preaching and damning and, and and even being, you know, look at the dark history. They'll, they'll kill you, hang you, butcher you, mutilate you, you know, just, it, just so baneful, baneful, demonic, <sighs> fallen angelic. That which is attacking is a cancer, is a disease, is a black hole, is, is, uh, need I say more? It is chaos, burning chaos. No, thank you. <laughs> Transmute that shit. We're gonna put some Ajax and scrubby that shit. Cleanse and purify that shit. We're healers, homie. You're a healer? Huh? Aren't you a light worker? Well, practice some light. 
Don't send out preaching uh, judgment. Send out healing, positive vibes. What a concept. What is your belief system teaching you? <laughs> Our system wants to love you and call you equal brother, sister. What's up, man? Oh, little animals. Love animals. <laughs> Wow. No, not some people. Seriously, man. I get a lot of loving comments. Yes, so thankful for you. But then I get some freaking crazy dark shit sometimes, right? That's how people are. Ch check. <laughs> uh, hopefully you don't have to experience too much of that. But when you're public, it happens more often. <laughs> like I have like over 300,000 subscribers now. I mean, I haven't actually counted it, but I know it got over 300,000. And thank you guys for those who are regulars and you keep coming back for this because it's blessed, man. Yes. And I know this doesn't look professional to some of you, but it still is legit, man. Like raw. This is raw without acting. There's no script. There's no teleprompter. <laughs> I'm just like, shwaka, yeah. Raw. Transmission. <laughs> yeah, baby. Why not? Let's be honest. If you're a being of Christ, the real Christ, because there is a false ones. <laughs> ones that, um, you guys, maybe you don't even know if there's any good ones out there. That's what the inner Christ is, uh, teachings and law of one teachings are about. You are, your divine origins, that you are divine. You're all, all the part of the creator. You can't be not all, because God is all. God is all. That's our teachings. And when you realize that truly as the truth, as the real truth of all highly evolved beings in the higher realities, they're all following this universal sacred truth. No dogmas of religion. As soon as you find dogma, that means it's telling you what you need to be doing. You're being told. No free will there. To be told what you must do when you know that there is a truth that you were given free will you're not going to be doomed to some lake of fire for practicing your free will your soul however will put you through some rough edge uh, rough rough lessons you know you can call that karma whatever but your soul wants to evolve and remember you're just a um, one part of a projected, you would say, your higher self is projecting you as a piece of itself. Like you go deep into your thoughts, you're creating another reality of yourself. And, you know, it's kind of like the uh, concept, everything is recorded in, in, into some Akashic record, uh, an eternal record, everything you think and do is becoming recorded into an eternal Akashic record. Everything is, is written down. Everything is in these records. And now if a being falls in its consciousness and goes to self-destruction into unconscious oblivion, then you're self-destructing your own creation. It's like God, God is deleting part of itself. It's like sometimes on your computer, you have to delete files you don't want on your computer anymore. Well, God can do that to itself. God can delete just like it could create. God recycles it into other energy, consciousness, energy. That's what's happening in this multidimensional reality. 
you transmute something from you. God is transmuting something from itself. It's possible for God to delete something from itself or to let go out of its Akashic record. Like someone can, at God's level, you know, the all-encompassing level of God, God could delete something it doesn't want. And God's an it, not a he or a she. You, you learn through your spiritual evolution that you go beyond gender. It's not, there is no reference to gender. And you become not just an individual, you become a collective. You become a collective consciousness. Like the Borg, you know, but it doesn't have to be a negative race like the Borg, but you have a, a you, telepathic connection to your whole race. So, <laughs> yeah, man, that would be interesting to hear everyone's thoughts. Like, like, think about that. Like how we all have some dark ass thoughts and secrets and sexual freaking distortions. Well, you wouldn't be having that shit if everyone could read each other's thoughts. That would clear up a lot of people's dark thoughts. Or it could be the opposite. Everyone would start feeding off each other's dark thoughts. And it, it becomes, con someone can control that. In your societies, it's someone is controlling your global collective thought. So it affects everyone on the individual. As the whole is changes, changes, well, parts, the parts of it, the whole change. The different tribes, the different DNAs are changing. You're just one of 12 tribes. Machiwa. Mokoya. And you bring that all together into a greater consciousness, a super consciousness. What's up? Okay, yeah, yeah. You're spiritual badasses. Yeah. Yeah. What you guess? Spiritual G's, spiritual gangsters, you got this, yeah, oh yeah, baby, <laughs> so we're on this journey of spirit, you're having a human experience, you're a greater being, you're a soul, projecting 12 of itself, 12 separate lifetimes, six males, six females. Numbers mean something. That's six twin flames. Machiwa. Sylvia Cole's on fire. <laughs> you are six females and six males. <laughs> And you're probably some asexuals and not bisexuals. What? No. <laughs> Male sexuals, female sexuals, androgynous sexuals and, and non-sexuals or asexuals. <laughs> Stop it. Anyways. Um, it becomes interesting, like how it changes how you feel in your body. And then you feel in your awareness expanded to higher parts of yourself. It trips you out, man. You're like, is this real? Yes, it's real. It's happening in some other dimension. You are multidimensional and you're becoming aware of the other dimensionals, parts of you. You see them. Maybe it looks like an alien bottle. What's up, Indigo? What's up, cuz? Indigo, cuz. And, and it's real, guys. We're aliens, homie. We, we don't look like... Remember, we look like blue humans on Sarai's B. We're called the Maharaji. You're Maharaji. Your Magi self. Holy Grail line. What's up? Um, well, we put ourselves down here. We're the Holy Grail Vatos. Remember, antimatter beings. 
came down here. What's up? And something greater called an ascended master being came down here. Remember, it's not being is kind of like confusing. It's a collective and a greater collective. Great, 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 great collective. So, cha, wow, big one, massive, colossal. So, you see these beings? The Ascended Masters are actually, it's a weird word, they shouldn't just call it that. I mean, I perceive it as, they're eternal giant collectives of consciousness that are, they never die. They're, they're forever beings, right? Like they don't have these uh, lifetimes or different experiences in the hologram, in the 15 dimensional holograms. So, they have a different, unique experience. And these beings are always in ecstasy, you know, bliss and joy. There's no sadness and depression. Can you imagine if you never had to experience that? No death, no sadness, no disease, no, no pain, no suffering. There is levels of experience that you will get to. You will eventually won't have anything dark in your experience. You will have ascended to a to a place of pure joy. The destiny of, of joy, remember? The path of order gives you the destiny of joy. Not chaos, which destroys life, which vampires and be, becomes the world's narcissist or psychopath. I heard, I was listening to somebody's comments or read someone's comments. Machua. Mwakaya. <laughs> I thank you guys for being here with me tonight. I know it was different, but hey, it's cool. We felt, we talked a lot about the indigos and it's a blessed, um, level of ourselves truly it's very special to be indigo child i i'm an indigo child and i've seen some pretty extraordinary things in my experiences that before i would have never b thought even possible or it was real or anything you know so now i'm experiencing things you know that i can like say whoa that's like a cool fucking thing to be able to say is how I experienced. So, <laughs> yeah, man, I hope you guys are, I should do a, a poll. Like I'll do a poll and you like ask a question and you guys, I'll put your answer. Okay. <laughs> Let's do a poll, homie. What's going on? Are you an indigo child? Write it in the comments, homies. <laughs> yeah, Davian, I'm an indigo homie. What's up? Indigo gangster. I'm an indigo gangster, man. What's up? Gangsters of Christ. <laughs> That is the Christos Maharata, the inner Christ, Shikaya, yeah. because God is not outside the one, not outside somewhere. It's always inside. And those other systems that are against life, against God, against humans, well, they'll tell you the opposite. Now you got to obey and, and worship and speak and sacrifice in the name of this God. Holy cow. So, you know, there is planets and people who are in bliss. <laughs> this isn't one, but hey, man, at least there's some people here being blessed in their, in their experience, in their, you know, 
healing in the world. I guess you could say some of this is like healing for you. And I believe it is some divine like uh, design. These freedom teachings, the Tantra Yahura, the uh, Inner Christos Law of One, um, this is all part of something blessed, man. As your brother Thavian, man, I, I really truly believe this is the greatest knowledge on the planet. Spiritual knowledge. And it's a spiritual science, which is so interesting. Makes it more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Christos avatars. I've seen those beings. They're like these... These Anahazi or like cat, bird-like people. And I know that's what some of the Orophim angels are described as. Feline aliens. Part, part, can, can you like, if you're an artist, can you draw something like a, that's part cat and part bird? Well, imagine those type of creatures as being these Orophim. And there's something... Um, that was created was the Azerite race. And so it was the Orophim plus the Azerite who made the Maharaji blue skin humans. And this is where the consciousness of the indigo children, Holy Grail line is. They're the Holy Grail. You know how like uh, Jehovah God and, and the Israelites, they... they they say they're the God's chosen people. Machua. <laughs> Avastia. There is no chosen people in Law of One, homie. You cannot get equality, you know, worship. How can you have a, anything worshiping? Worshiping what? You're all God. You don't need to worship something else like a idol or like a um, something that represents on the outside God that's this trick fooling yourself God has always been inside and we just become distorted and even dark even you know phantom antichristic Because we're trained. We're trained that way. You know, we say to ourselves eventually, I don't want to be that way. <laughs> like you get you tired. Some of us get tired of, of the consequence or, or the, you know, you don't want to be experiencing this. You're not happy. You know, there's time for healing. You admit it to yourself. And so... You guys are blessed. <laughs> yeah, Ellis Dreamers, Sylvia Cole, that's right. Oh, poll time, thank you. <laughs> thank you for reminding me, start a poll. Yeah, it's always fun to do a poll. Okay, are you an indigo child child forward slash adult you can be an indigo adult you guys okay are you an indigo child or adult yes no or i'm not sure because some of you maybe simply don't know i am not sure <laughs> start yeah <laughs> i'm an indigo i'm one of the ones who say it <laughs> 83% say yes, 79% say yes, 76, 78, it's going to go like that until it goes to 81, 82, wow, 82% of you homies are indigo children, indigo adults, yeah, welcome to the club, vatos, <laughs> it's kind of like this color. Indigo, like a grape juice, purplish looking thing. If it's hard to imagine indigo gray, 
Um, here's the best way to do it, I think, is see a, a ball of energy that's blue and a ball of energy that's violet. That's your fifth chakra and your crown chakra. And combine blue and violet, you get blue-violet. Indigo. So you see blue and a little bit of purple in it. Yeah. That's the indigo ray, homie. <laughs> You said it, homies. Yeah, holy ones. <laughs> oh, technical issues? I, everything's okay, right? 80% of you say yes. Because uh, this is a, a very, like I'm starting to release a series of videos in order of viewing. So I will put that in a special playlist. Probably I'm going to call it the Inner Crystals playlist. And so a lot of people always ask me like, where's the best place to start? And that's why I'm making this starting from the basic concepts and then go into the advanced concepts of the inner crystals teachings. We're also going to go through the timelines of, of Lemuria and Atlantis and even modern periods of like what's happened since 9-11. Um, so, and even modern 2023, if you're following Tantri Ahura. So anyways, I love you guys. I'm glad to have you here. It's always awesome when we, when the shield comes together, a part of it, you know, not everyone knows about Crystal Savitar, but hey, there's a good chunk of us here. <laughs> 44? I'm 52, or 53 now, after my birthday. 53. <laughs> wow, Celine's 26. Kelly, 44. Ooh, Corvette Speed Racer, you're 33. You're in your master number. You're in a master number. What's up? Uh, must be an interesting year, right? <laughs> I'm ancient, baby. Here in this body for 26. Wow. We got you. Get behind the shield. Yes, you said it, Ellis Dreamers. We are God inside and out. You guys got are on fire. Thank you, Fabian. Peace and blessings. Thank you. I shall prevail. Charles Thomas. Simone. What's up, Simone? Away. 33? 25? 70? Thank you, Connie, for being here. Bless you. Natalia Soul. That's a cool number. You guys are awesome. So a lot of 30s and 40-year-olds, mostly. Some chum youngsters like Mac Rambo. Starman, 71 Bato. Much respect. That's a lot of lifetime, homie. Respect the elders. <laughs> oh, another master number, 44. All right, Noel. Good. To now we got the brackets representing. <laughs> Justine, 59, blessing. 39, 50. Wow, you guys. Thanks, thanks for sharing. And and numbers are important. Like 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 when I had my birthday recently, I'm like, it, it it makes you go into respect, you know, you go deep inside yourself. And uh like some of you like maybe recently found out or you believe that you're an indigo child and that usually is is coming from your dna you guys you start to you don't understand all of it but there's enough of it that just draws you so far like you feel so happy to find this information that's what happened to me too when i first found this information like when i first saw the interview with Kerry Cassidy and Ashiana, Yasha. Yeah.
so it's nine o'clock you guys i'll probably be finishing up the video um i'm always happy to see you guys though <laughs> i want to hug you and if you're a girl i want to kiss you <laughs> and, you know or just hang out and chat why not oh we just like enjoy <laughs> make love i mean we don't have to but you know <laughs> Uh, astral sex is not really safe, you know. We have to have real sex, okay? No, I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Anyways, I think, yeah, it's probably safer in real life. <laughs> There's too many astral traps up there. So, I don't trust it. Anal or astral? No, sorry, not natural. Yeah. <laughs> Not all astral is is just is negative, you know. Some astral, if you do, if you have some astral, <laughs> I don't know where that was going. Anyways, you just feel good. You're like, damn, this is good. Like you ate a good meal. It tasted so divine. It just feels good. Tantric, even sometimes, you know, ooh la la. <laughs> but yeah, it's like you just experience joys in different parts of you you didn't know you had. So <laughs> it's like you chakras, you can feel them, right? So you feel them. Ooh yeah, I feel that one. Shit. <laughs> You feel more of yourself. I mean, it's hard to explain. Hey, another one, one, one. There's 111 people in line. <laughs> yeah. There, there's. You realize sometimes these divine, miraculous things, and it's like, like I was saw a UFO for real, man, close up, and then I it zapped me or or abducted me, took me. But maybe it wasn't abduction. Maybe it was just part of my homies, right? Which I believe because it was... Um, I don't know, man. That was like a profound experience. Like, it wouldn't. if it's your homies, you wouldn't call it abduction, right? Or you could call it a, a, a love abduction or something. I don't know. Like a guardian. A guardian... It's not an abduction. It's a, hey, we're picking you up. We're being picked up. I was picked up and brought back to the same moment. I was out of my body. They do things Templar. Templar use time travel. They manipulate time. Can you believe it? We're becoming masters. We're becoming time walkers. Using Merkaba fields and uh, <laughs> scalar activation. Consciousness. Light, color, sound, symbol codes. The base codes of matter. What's up, homie? You're saying, don't, you're not acting, you can't act like God, but we're all God. It's not an ego thing. It's a realization thing, Bato. You either do or you don't realize. Doesn't mean you're damned. You can all become awakened. <laughs> you can all experience psychic perceptions. You know, we're making an evolutionary leap. What we call a spiritual ascension. It's a metamorphosis. You're going to go to a new body. A new timeline. A new a new planet. A new... It's just going to be freaking awesome. You're suddenly human. Now you're an angel. What's up? Extraterrestrial. Multidimensional. People want to make you like you're just this little creature. No, you're wonderful, you're beautiful, you're magnificent. 
You're, you're, you're like high. You're low level, but you're high level. Two. You're all those levels. You, you live in a poor house. You live in a rich house mansion. You live a few years old. You're immortal sometimes. <laughs> I mean, you eventually get to the levels where you don't die. <laughs> you just transmute in the, your reality into the next reality. And then you transmute again without dying. We got to get used to that because that, that is the normal. This dying part is not normal. You want to get out of the abnormal. Out of the dying and falling. <laughs> like I've been watching this uh, TV series. Outlander. You know with the romantic couple. But their time traveler. is Her name is Claire. Right? Comes to the cow. It's not like the cowboy days. But, but it's way in Scotland days. And like Braveheart days. You know stuff like that. But she traveled through the stones and she had crystals in her jewelry. She was able to travel to another timeline. It was actually in Scotland because she went to, she traveled there with her husband, but then she went through the magic stones in, in Scotland and it took her into a past timeline of Scotland. And there is such thing as these portals on planet Earth, you guys. I mean, remember we heard we know that indigo type ones are are walk-ins, and I think if I'm an indigo type one, it was when I had my car accident. It's possible that was a, a possible time where I I was in like a Volkswagen Bug at the time, a Super V8. I was a crazy driver as a teenager, man. Anyways, I had I don't remember the accident. I never, I just had flashes of, of being, of the paramedics helping me, but I had ran a yellow light or something and I hit a big truck in a intersection and my car went off to the side and hit a, a pole, a telephone pole or something. My little Volkswagen bug was squashed and I don't remember the accident. I just remember a flash of time when I saw the paramedics. So I blacked out. And then I wasn't remember anything else until I was in the hospital. And when I was in the hospital, I didn't even know my girlfriend's name. Why did I lose memory? Am I a walk-in type one? I don't know. I think if I, if I am, because I feel like I've seen such incredible shit. I could be a what we call a walk-in. A braided walk-in. If any of you had a near-death experience. Because I think that's what happened to me. And that's how I crossed over. If I'm a walk-in. Because. It's just. Weird to know that that's what all indigo type ones are. Like, I I know if you if you jar your head, you can forget stuff for a little while, but also wouldn't that be indicative of of a walk in, as well, a crossing over. And when I have a when I've been on medicine, I've seen me crossing over before. It's a trip to see yourself crossing over into another reality. It's ascension. Walking through a stargate. I've done that. I have memory of it. So I know this shit is real. Like, I don't need others to believe, but I'm trying to get this community of like-minded people. And a lot of you agree. I mean, you don't have to agree with everything, even even with Ashiana. I mean, some people like Lisa Murray, Lisa Renee better or whatever. That's whatever your choice is. <laughs> Remember, you're God sovereign free. And that came from, Ash from Lisa Renee. <laughs> God sovereign free. As far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys. Maybe she got it from Ashona because I know she, when she, if you see 
Lisa Renee's oldest videos on her channel, she uh, obviously was a student of Ashiana. You could tell. But she has her own psychic perceptions. She has her own connections. And she adds a whole hell of a lot more. Like different stuff that Ashiana doesn't talk about. So that's interesting. And I know she's talked about Ashiana because she was complaining one time about Ashiana attacking her for uh, talking her um, her terms like like it's trademarked or something. That's how I know that Lisa Renee is, is it in her old days. In the old days, she was a student of Ashiana. And I, I kind of agree with Lisa. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't be prevented from talking about this information. I mean, but I, I respect her information and, and change it in my, you know, I'm not going to say exactly her, her word for word, you know, we're not copying her, her stuff. So notice like I said, I don't do any script and I'm just kind of like just, it's a flow of my higher consciousness. And it's for whenever I'm focused in the, in the now for this dialogue for tonight was about Indigo Children. But, you know, I, I come here every Tuesday and Saturday. Sorry if I was a little bit late today, but generally it's around 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm in Nevada time, which is Pacific time. I got to actually check throughout the year because it changes sometimes. Arizona was cool because it never changed. Arizona is the only one, that, as far as I know, that doesn't change their time zone. It's actually in Mountain Standard Time. I mean, you know, when I went to Nevada, I noticed the, you, you dealt with that, man. Like sometimes the East Coast is three hours ahead and then other times it's only two hours ahead. I don't get that shit in the Arizona. We we don't move. Other, others do, but we do don't. <laughs> I still consider myself Arizona because that's where all my family are. Though I was born in California. <laughs> but most of my life in Arizona. Arizona. And I've been to Stargate One, in near the Sedona Painted Desert. Definitely have driven through there. I mean, it's weird because we find all these connections, you know. Sometimes we feel like we're in this movie, The Truman Show, like with Jim Carrey. <laughs> Is there someone watching us all like an experiment, you know, and controlling shit? I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful, blessed evening. And please come see me again. Watch these videos I've been releasing on my YouTube channel. If you're not watching this on YouTube. Um, you want to check out those videos because this is a series that's going to lead it. I'm going to be teaching you guys about Atlantis and Lemuria. I can't wait to get to that. But you're also going to be learning some of these mechanics and some of these meditations. I'm excited. Yeah, you can always go check out Ashiana's work and find those video, her videos. And I recommend you guys learn Cathara 1 through 4 and then start the sliders, Ascension. You guys can learn your own Ascension. The information is available if you look for it. I love you. Bless you. Bless you. Peace. Inner peace. Love, joy, much respect to you guys in your, in your journey. Thank you for those who, of you who donated. I'm sorry if I didn't say a reply to everyone. Sometimes I kind of like get into a long uh, flow. <laughs> After all, it's kind of like I'm streaming spirit. <laughs>
And I go through different emotions and different vibrations. You guys can notice and experience a variety of energy here. But it comes from a space of love. And, and we speak from the inner crystal's truth, which is the, the reality of spiritual evolution. Much respect. Bless you guys. You're blessed. <laughs> You're never alone. There's always divine beings around you, holy angels and archangels and avatars. Uh, you're mighty. Much respect to your evolution. Your crystal body is getting bigger, honey. What's up? <laughs> Namaste. Bless you. <laughs> Kiss ass. <Ooh. laughs> What's up? Bear hug. Bear hug. Ooh. Sorry, just having fun. <laughs> Namaste, homies. Spiritual G's. <laughs> yeah, 79% says you're indigo. Bless you. 80% of you. Yeah. <laughs> what you, uh.